Welcome to Road to Redline, the number one Porsche and car podcast, celebrating the people and the stories behind the world's finest sports cars. Road to Redline is presented by YouTuber and magazine editor Lee Sibley, serial owner and columnist Joe Williams, and 993 owner Andy Brooks. Three enthusiasts on a mission to open doors and bring you the best stories, secrets and exclusives from the worlds of Porsche. We begin series three with an absolute belter, chatting to not one, but two people behind perhaps the most admired brand in our game outside of Porsche Platz to deliver you a world exclusive for podcasts. Ooh. <laughs> I told you it's going to be good. We're joined by Rob Dickinson and Maz Fawaz, founder and CEO, respectively, of Singer Vehicle Design, to discuss the company's step into the realm of competitive racing off-road with its new all-terrain competition study. This outrageous reimagining of the 964 breaks new ground for Singer and the genre as a whole. Built for the dunes of the Dakar, its twin-turbocharged all-wheel drive features double wishbones and double dampers per corner, its carbon body features front and rear clamshells for quick access to its internals. The ACS is all over our Instagram feeds right now, but Rob and Maz are ready to tell you, our Road to Redline faithful, all about it. We want to say, first of all, a huge thanks to two of our sponsors this episode, don't we, chaps? We do indeed. So we've got, uh, we've got the PorscheBuyer.com, a.k.a. Carl Mayer himself, who uh, has been, uh, been on the pod. And Ashgood's. Uh, classics and sports cars and for anyone who's uh who's been to ashgood's or fan on instagram they've uh they've always got uh what i think is one of the one of the most interesting eclectic and extensive stock holdings of of porsches uh there's always something for everyone on there they do don't they have all sorts of stuff pops up uh, it's always a good view on instagram see what i love about ashgood is their turnovers incredible yeah you've got to be seriously quick haven't you i mean i've, yeah. I've seen cars on there that that they look below trade money almost. I mean, there's, there's been 991 GT3s at, at circa 80K. Uh, there was below list new GT4s and Spiders. I mean, there's also, there was a Taycan on there with, with delivery miles the other week. But they're gone Nothing a couple of days later, aren't they? You know, you have to really, yeah. you have to act quickly there because um, sometimes with other dealers, you'll maybe, you'll see the same car there for a good few weeks. But um, yeah, def- definitely not at Ash Goods, that's for sure. No, I think they're, they're trading, trading cars quickly. Uh, and yeah, some might argue at the right money or the correct price rather than sort of a um yeah overinflated yeah exactly that i think they they're exactly that i think they're they're bang on the money which which means their cars do move quickly which is is nice to see i think and carl similarly is a bit different to everybody else isn't he because he is someone that actually wants to buy your porsche indeed it's almost the perfect combo isn't it you can you can ditch your old one and go buy a new one all at the same time i think with them um, with what carl's doing at the moment is is pretty amazing he's, he's got access to every opc in the country a million independents and and every man and his dog that might be in the trade uh, and some of his contacts are, are phenomenal i think he's, he's placed cars for people and and got some amazing money i mean only is a porsche guy through and through and he's obviously come through that world so he he understands if a car's you know a certain age or a certain mileage or a certain specification i think i think he sort of understands that that's not the same as just getting off book value yeah, agreed. He's a genuinely trustworthy bloke. We can personally vouch for him, can't we? Putting our reputations on the line here now. <laughs> He's a very, very knowledgeable bloke, very trustworthy bloke. So if you are needing to sell your Porsche now or at any time in the future, Road to Redline says the first person you should call is Carl Mayer. So yes, huge thanks to Ashgood Porsche or Ashgood Classic and Sports Cars. Um, and also Carl Mayer, friend of the pod, isn't he? Who's uh, the PorscheBuyer.com check them out yeah. and like we say thanks very much to, to both of them for sponsoring this episode of road to redline rob maz it was genuinely as we say it's our complete honor and privilege to have you on road to redline so thank you very much for dedicating some time today uh, rob as founder of course of singer vehicle design maz as ceo and uh two-thirds of a trio if we include richard tuthill for uh, purposes of today that are behind the magnificent all-terrain competition study reimagining of the Porsche 911 
a car that we can refer to as the ACS from this point on <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to make a, things easier. Um, but I mean, a mouthful. it's yeah. I mean, how, what's it been like today? First of all, it's obviously the car was, was officially kind of the embargo released and it was launched today officially. So how's it been? It's been pretty, it's been pretty, pretty bonkers. It, it was, it was, we, we all raised the laugh a little bit. It, it's uh, Richard Tuttle was asking us because we all all been watching the, you know, we we knew what time the thing would the the news would hit and everything, and so it's it's like, well, are people going to like it? Are they going to hate it? Are they, you know, it's, are people going to get excited by it? You, you don't really know. And Richard Richard said, so what typically happens in these situations? I'm going <laughs> typically. What do you mean typically? We've never, you know, it's like we launch we we launch a car as or an idea as nutty as this every you know every week. So we have some kind of idea of how how these things go. We don't have an idea how these things go. We just um, we just hope for the best. We we you know we we, we do we do what we do and uh, keep our fingers crossed that that people dig it and. Uh, so it's great. I mean, it's it, it's it's wonderful. I mean, it's a, it's a great day for us and the team. Um, this has been a, a product of um, huge teamwork across across the ocean, um, with our creative team in in Los Angeles and Richard in um, in Banbury and his fantastic team, and then a, a team of uh, body engineers that we're working with who are also intrinsically involved in this. Um, and um, yeah, it's just uh, it's just amazing. You know, we have our we have a incredible client to thank for giving us the opportunity to do this, putting an awful amount of trust in us to 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 come up with something that was fittingly um, fittingly special and um, you know was um, was on on message if you like for 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 what we try and do at Singer. So uh, we have ultimately him to thank, and, uh, and he's wonderful and. Um, and is allowing us to uh, encouraging us to uh, potentially, uh, you know, assemble a few more of these for for, for other folks if if um, if they want it. So it's a, yeah. a big day for a big day for us. Yeah. Are we Excellent. allowed to know who the madman is, or is, it, is that still a secret? Uh, well, he 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 would rather he's super super, super private chap. He'd, he'd he'd rather stay under the radar. Um, okay. Whether, whether, what whether did, that's uh, gonna, whether what that's did he think possible. when he saw the car? I think that'd be the more interesting one. What was his what was his reception of the, yeah. the first idea? Well, he's 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 uh, he's he saw the car. Um, uh, before it was before it was painted in it in its uh, a few months ago and was um very very pleased with it yeah very 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 pleased and and uh will be looking forward to driving it uh, very very shortly he hasn't driven it yet but um uh, we're working on that at the moment yeah. so, so rob we i'm getting word we've officially crashed our website like it's <laughs> it actually doesn't work I don't know what that means. Is it possible to crash? Does anybody get Yeah, apparently it's it's the early days of the web. Uh, (laughs) You've also also blocked all of our Instagram feeds as well, I think. Yeah, I was was looking at Instagram earlier and I was just scrolling up and it's like, oh, it's all ACS. There's nothing else. (laughs) It's all that it was. (laughs) Ah, Well, we didn't plan on that. It's it's, it's wonderful. I mean, it's... um, it's it's really really good to to uh, to um i mean we are you know we we say this every time you know everyone knows our stuff is unfortunately expensive um we have to keep saying sorry about that because <laughs> you know we we can't afford our own work we continue to somehow we've scrabbled to find ourselves in in the to have the opportunity to to live vicariously through others and to spend a lot of other people's money in the way that we would spend if we had that money uh we would spend it on ourselves and um and uh uh it's terrific that it doesn't turn others off um i think to to to, to, to be you know we're all i think we're all grassroots Porsche guys um and to do something which is elitist or snobbish or is only for a certain club is was that's not why singer exists as singer, yeah. singer exists as a vessel to do as to aspire to excellence uh, without sounding too pompous and um and we're having an enormous amount of fun as you can probably tell doing that yeah and um and uh you know ho- hopefully hopefully bringing a modicum of of joy to a, to a few people um if we can and um yeah, and just and just and just uh, you know celebrating this amazing brand that's Porsche, and uh, and uh, if specifically 
with this with ACS celebrating um, competition and uh, and uh, competition heritage, and of course our love of competition as well, and our love of motorsport as well, which 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 is thickly ingrained, I think, in everything we've done for the last ten years, um, which has been you know my, my Porsche's greatest nine elevens have all been bred and improved on the racetrack, and I think um, our work uh, our work for the last uh, 10, 11 years has, has reflected that, and and this gives ACS gives us an opportunity to 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 do that with a little bit more focus, I think, as a as a very very targeted competition weapon yeah. that uh, that uh, that can go anywhere. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's it, the result is outrageous as as we've seen today on pictures on our Instagram feeds. Rob, you mentioned um, grassroots was was the word that that you use. So, I mean, can you remind us of like your early days in Porsche, particularly when you swapped uh, Norfolk for LA, which you know it must have sucked, but uh, <laughs> um, <Yeah>. particularly. <laughs> <laughs> particularly in regards to like the brown bomber because i mean in total 911 circles that car is is just downright legendary kind of for what oh, it wow. represents and, and where it's kind of it, that has literally been the vehicle hasn't it to to create singer vehicle design is that fair to say yeah i i, I don't think that's 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 over egging it uh, um i think um yeah I, I, so i i i fell in love with the with the porsche 911 at a very early age Found myself in 1996 with the ability to to, to purchase one um, through ill-gotten gains from my modest rock and roll um, uh, efforts, um, and bought myself a, a, a 1987 32 Carrera. And as soon as I bought that car, all I wanted was a I, I, I got sucked into the zeitgeist of the early 911, and <laughs> I purchased a semi-completed restoration of a of a 90 of a 2.4 S. Excuse me. Um, this is while I'm still living in England. Um, in between touring, um, doing a lot of touring with my band, I, I, we we restored this 2.4 S, which is a very very rare car, um, one of only twelve right hand drive 2.4 Ss that uh, were in the country, so rarer than a 73 RS in in um, in the UK, and previously owned by Alvin Lee from ten years after. So originally bought by Alvin Lee in 1973 from the great band 10 years after and serviced in from 1974 onwards at, at auto farm. So yeah. it was a, it was a car that was full of, um, full of heritage and it was light, light ivory with a, with Recaro seats, electric sunroof, fantastic specification. Yeah. I, I, I spent a huge amount of angst and, and money restoring that car to original specifications as, as you should do with such a rare car. And all I wanted to do after I finished one, it was was mess with it and and fix it, and 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 of course I couldn't do that because the car was too a bit too special. So fast forward to two thousand and three, um, I was in Los Angeles making my making a record, and I uh, had kind of already relocated to America, um, and I didn't know what to do with the cars in England. So I sold them all. And I had this epiphany in 2003 to build my own perfect Porsche 911 with the benefit of Californian optimism, um, <laughs> um, inspiration by the, R, the, the freshly minted R grouper, which you, you guys probably are uh, hopefully aware of yeah. and, and the freedom that Californian California imbued in me to, to, tip my nose and thumb my nose at originality and embrace the hot rod spirit, which was clearly in me uh, five years earlier when I was trying yeah. to restore a car back to <laughs> meticulously back to, to, um, to, 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 to original specification. And I had the time of my life um, uh, uh, purchasing a 1969 Bahama yellow 911 E from a very fabulous guy called Hans Lapine, who's the the son of Tony Lapine, who's the head of wow. Porsche Design, wow. and uh, Hans was the head of the Advanced VW Design Studio in um, in in California at the time. So I flew to LA in 2003, purchased actually 2002, purchased that car, moved to LA in 2003 to make a record. As well as making a record, I built this car, and it was my own. A celebration and homage to the 911R, the 911RS, all the great sporting early 911s from the 60s and 70s, uh, 70s, but imbued with a kind of rock and roll spirit, I guess, for want of a better term. Um, 
and uh, it became a bit of a hit. I was living in Hollywood and I was my daily driver and I was pretending to be James Dean or Steve McQueen <laughs> on a daily basis. And it was, was, it got the car, the car got in a lot of magazines and more importantly, it started, I got requests to buy it on a daily basis from some of the movers and typical movers and shakers that you might expect to live in Los Angeles, record producers, film producers and directors. I, I, I became very popular sitting in this car and, and this, this idea, <laughs> this idea slowly came to me um, uh, that the, the fascination and the understanding of the Porsche 911 is far more mainstream than nerds like me sometimes think it is. And the idea came to me that the so, so this car was a very much a Frankenstein car. It had a it was a 1960 car, 1969 chassis with a 1978 three liter engine, and a gearbox from here and brakes from here. It's a, cl- a classic uh, Frankenstein car. Uh, of course, the interchangeability of parts on the 911 make it that make it make that very very a very realistic thing to attempt to do. Um, and I knew that somewhere. There was a greatest hits, best of Porsche 911 in my brain um, that would appeal to not only to nerds like me, but to others. And that I think that was the that was the seed of, of, of Singer. So it was it was definitely the brown. Maz actually coined the term brown bomber. It was it was never uh, Maz always uh, started talking about because it it's this dirty yellow color. <laughs> and uh, so the brown bomber was born, and um, and it was definitely the um, definitely the um the origin of of, of singer so yeah. i'm interested to ask where, where did your um where did your first client come from who, who shared that vision and that madness to go yet yeah, build me a car he he we, we we so we got to 2009 and we we put put our orange idea the orange conceptual idea of what we were trying to do in front of in front of the world at, in, in monterey in 2009 and very quickly um the reaction was 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 um was 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 positive and very quickly the phone started to ring and um and the, the, a very brave man um who has was, was very dear to us um put his money down and we built him a car he gave us three hundred thousand dollars and we spent nine hundred thousand dollars building this car. <laughs> Sounds Did he cough here. up the six hundred thousand <laughs> boys? That's when you know you got a business. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Maz, you've been involved a lot longer than, well, sort of not officially, but you've been involved in Singer, haven't you? I, I was listening yeah. to a podcast um, and your sort of history is quite in, in intertwined in, in the Singer story. Yeah, I, I met Rob when he was doing that, that first car for that first client um, when, it was, when it was about finished. And um, I just moved to LA to, to, uh, to start a tech business, which I did. Yeah. Um, but it was like meeting, uh, I mean, it was like instant, we're like instant friends, obviously it's not hard to make friends with Rob, but, um, um, it was like meeting a guy in a band, it was a cool band. It wasn't like a bit of business. It wasn't thinking. And so it was hard not to, you know, not to hang around. And, um, and then at, when I, I had moved, moved to LA to start this thing, but it required writing a lot of software, which I don't do. So I did a lot of waiting. Um, yeah. And so during that time, I, I spent a lot of that waiting time with Rob um, and, and sort of formally working on, on some stuff. Um, and, I, and we were very excited at the time. We were working on the idea that that singer might do five, five or eight of these things, <laughs> you know, ever. How many, uh, how many are there now? There are about 150 out in the world, and we wow. have orders for another several hundred. Oh my word. Um, but there's also DLS. So in, in 2016, I, I quit my, my other thing and we, we started the DLS project and I, that's when I started actually working at Singer in a, in a, in, in a, in an actual capacity of any sort. Actually paid to that, I was, I was very busy. No, no, actually paid, paid to be there. No, 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 no. <laughs> No one gets paid, is it? <laughs> <laughs> is it? Is it a pure passion? Pure. I mean, we we are we are we're uh, uh, obviously madly in love with what we do, and yeah. it's and it sort of makes you unstoppable in a weird way because it's not the easiest. I mean, 
not not to start CEOing on the phone call, but it's not an easy thing for, as a you know for, as a business goes. You, you you it's like when when the business got to ten cars, you would never bet it would get to twenty. Yeah. Or if it gets to a hundred, you never think it's going to get to two hundred. We're not selling you know shoes or something where we can like look at data from other companies and understand what yeah. what, what where this is going to go. We're just making stuff we absolutely adore and. It must be a completely different animal now to what you ever expected it to be when you when you took it when you took on the the role. Surely. Well, I didn't start. So for me, DLS was a was a almost a weekend project. I was I was actually still I was running another business, a, te- a tech business. I just somehow I didn't take it all that seriously until probably 2017, and then it just became serious. I think it became serious for everybody when it's not just building this this fabulous thing that Rob, you know, to, 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 to get to kind of spec the mechanics of something that Rob designed that Rob, that Rob, you know, that, that looks like something that came out of Rob's head. I mean, it's, it's a fantasy. It's awesome, but we didn't necessarily, I, I think at least I didn't say, all right, we need, we can start looking 10 years down the road now. It's yeah. not just a garage band anymore. It's something, I don't know what it is, but it's not just a garage band. Right. Um, so I'm not getting, that we're any more sophisticated than <laughs> yeah i'm getting from that then that you're you're the sort of tech guy um making sure that it works as as the the feel of the car the the, the function and rob is the more um what the look is or is or, or is there a, a crossover between no, the two of no. you let, let, let me straighten that M- yeah Maz, Maz's primary role is to make this work as a business <laughs> okay um, <laughs> And uh, my primary role is to uh, is to curate the output of what we do. Where we meet is on the development of the cars. So um, uh, we basically, I mean, Maz's skills are, as, a, as an entrepreneur and a, and a businessman are, are well honed. Um, you know, my my uh, I have an opinion, for better or for worse, and that's pretty well honed. And you know, sing, singer, singer for the last ten years has been a vehicle for my opinions, basically. I suppose, um, with with Maz, you know, being a kindred spirit. And uh, but now we develop these cars together, and we develop these things together because we are all both on the on the same wavelength. And I think when I met Maz, for me, it was clear. That, I mean, Maz, I thought Maz came in kind of pretending to be a client when I first met him. I, th- I knew he wasn't immediately. I knew he was a bullshitter. <laughs> but it was clear that, again, it was another affirmation that there were people out there that, that I mean, he that, that, that thought the way I did. And it just built upon that faith that you have that, uh, that what you think is the right thing to do other people will agree with you. And Maz, uh, and, and me and Maz have thought that way for the last 10 years, which is why we're so close and is why we, we can um, divide and conquer in the way that we do um, and meet in the middle where the important shit is, which is, which is the thing and getting the thing right. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, Maz is pretty handy behind the wheel. He's driven everything. Um, I have, driven quite a lot of stuff so uh, you know I, I have my um i have my opinions uh, on 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 that i leave a lot of that to him and and he lives leaves the stuff that i'm perhaps better at to me and we meet in the middle and and but basically we're product people and we're fierce product people for something very specific and that's what we want to put on our driveway yeah and 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 that's the only level of 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 uh of uh um, committee that exists when we do this stuff it's do we want it badly if we don't the day we don't go there we go well it's okay i bet i guess some yeah. people maybe someone's gonna like it and yeah. we we have to desperately want this thing before we show yeah. it to the world and it's gonna it just it just gets added to our bucket list of the cars that we hopefully will have one in our own garage one day and uh, we're working on that but um and that's and that's basically how how the company has has, has grown and, and developed, and we je- we guard it quite jealously because um, you can't build. So you do need 
maybe this sounds odd. You you absolutely need to know what you are aiming for, but you also need to know that you need a team and a village to do it. And I think yeah. that's something that we have grasped very well. We're extremely great at knowing what we're not great at. Yeah. And we're extremely good at picking up the phone and charming the pants off people and getting people who really shouldn't have no business in talking to us because they're they're proper they're proper people in the car business and actually making friends with them and getting to, getting them to help us and uh and we've done that in the past with uh, a whole bunch of people on the dls program and we've of course done it with acs as well with richard tuttle so um we are great team players we know our own strengths we know our weaknesses and uh we know how to put a brilliant team together and i think that's what it's all about um there's a, a brilliant team of people who have, have contributed to this car um the acs uh, project and um and we are beholden to a whole bunch of people for for, for any success we've had in the last uh, 12 years so again um, a pick, long answer wasn't it yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'll say yeah pick, picking back up on obviously the yeah the star of the show the acs i mean i mean can you can you give us a quick rundown on on how it came about and and the kind of the timeline on on getting to where it is now? Because I understand somebody's obviously turned up with a a couple of nine six fours and say, "Can you build me one of these? Uh, I want to go and rally them." But yeah, you know, what was the in between bit to actually making this happen as a project? Because it must be quite a difference. And I'm sure you don't say yes to everything that that turns up on the doorstep. No, we don't. And and we 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 we. we... For discipline, we have to stay between the the, the, the lines um, as much as we can. At the same time, we are proud of our special wishes program, which allows, um, which encourages people to stray off the reservation to, to a degree. And um, we've made uh, a number a number of really really special. Um, hopefully, all our cars are special, but very very unique uh, visions of our cars for a few of our clients. And then, and then there's the there's the I guess the special special wishes which which we absolutely love to talk about, but only if the potential partner is willing for us to go to the levels that we need to go to to present something that is well off the beaten path, which of course ACS is, and um, to do something as 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 as, uh, as ambitious as we've attempted to do here um and execute it to the standards that are essential for us um isn't straightforward and, and isn't and isn't uh, isn't particularly cheap as you can imagine um so we pick our battles and when we find a, a kindred spirit that we did uh, one of our great clients um who 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 talked to us about a rally car and a car more specifically that could go very fast in desert conditions and sand conditions um we take it very seriously and we have a we have a very grown up you know mature discussion about what we're trying to do and this is can we do something that the client um is asking us to do but is also very importantly appropriate for the company and um as you can imagine such people are quite rare and um and uh so this was uh, this was the acs was very much a, a product of that kind of um um genesis as was dls to a, to, to a little bit of a less 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 focused degree um and you know what an op- what an opportunity to really push the boundaries and to uh, and to do something um uh, that no one's done before in in in, in a way which um which uh, furthers everyone's it's a win-win for everyone it's a win for 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 our client it's a win for our clients if if they want if they want one of these cars and of course it's it it builds it builds the um it builds the uh the the the, the bricks around singer's strength um in what it in what it's capable of um you know we have, extraordinary we have... isn't it i mean the end result is is phenomenal i mean how do you how do you keep that i mean there must be a level of uh, is it from you directly rob i mean there must be a level of sort of ocd almost throughout the product to keep it that good well there there, there is i mean again um you know, there's th- three main food groups in the creation of this car. There's the the create the creative uh, the creative department in at, at Singer, which is led on this project by the brilliant Florian Flatow, who's my lead lead designer. 
um, and um, the team with him, which is, uh, I really should give everyone a shout out for this because everyone's worked extremely hard in challenging circumstances in the last 12 months. Um, uh, Woody and Richard Vaughan and Flo Bracas in, in Paris and uh, Dave Berg. And then we've got our fantastic team in the UK, which is um, uh, Dave Fairburn, Sam Mosley, um, uh, Kevin Richardson, Adam DeFrancesco, uh, the guys at Ari Forged, and of course the brilliant team at at, 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 uh, at Richard Tuttle's um, Emporium in near Banbury. I mean, just the considering, you know, I saw the car for the first time forty eight hours ago in person. You know, we've 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 done this car with um, literally over Zoom calls like this, um, and uh, and with huge attention to detail, as as, as you mentioned, but. A huge amount of passion and 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 you know we, we don't switch off at f- five o'clock in the afternoon everyone's going full strength all, all the way through this year and it's been a very challenging year of course for everybody so to develop something as as wonderful as acs in in such a challenging year i think is, is a is a testament to the to the wonderful teamwork that um that we've enjoyed and um everyone deserves a huge amount of credit for for, for, for what they've achieved I think for me, the the ACS generally is quite a step change from the anything else that Singer has created or or reimagined so far. Um, even in reference to DLS, I think a key detail for me, the the, the biggest thing is the fact that the car's turbocharged. Um, what bearing will turbocharging have on Singer's future generally? A lot. <laughs> it will have a lot. A lot of you're you're going to see. Some more turbocharging from us uh, over the coming over the coming months um, and years. Um, again, it's a it's a it's a it's a big part of Porsche's heritage. Um, it's a it's a part of Porsche, Porsche's heritage we have deliberately not touched yet. And um, ACS is um, is the first, I guess, flexing of our muscles when it comes to turbocharging and, and, and understanding the, the discipline of a turbocharged flat six engine and um it's extremely exciting um you know with 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 gloried in norm, normally aspirated engines now for 10 11 years we, the, our, our 3.8 and our four liter engines are, 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 are pretty magnificent and then of course we took it hope one, one could argue to the to the logical conclusion with the um four valve uh, dls engine four liter um which was designed by john mcgee at, uh, at williams um you know 500 horsepower um dare we say it's ultimate incarnation of the of the classic air cooled um 911 uh, normally aspirated 911 engine over, with oversight from hans metzger um was who helped us with that with that engine um i was talking to chris harris yesterday and uh he was saying, he said, I don't think people realize that uh, what a historically important engine it is, the, the DLS engine is. And I, I kind of smiled inwardly a little bit because me and Maz have talked about this a lot over the last four years, is that, that we we as Singer are, will be laughed out of the room if we start talking about how historically important our work is because it's sound, we sound like freaking idiots and pompous, <laughs> pompous ourselves but but we did we, but I, I i'm very very happy to admit that we surrounded ourselves with so much talent on dls that we knew um and we we went to such ridiculous lengths um to to do something which if we still had a business at the end of it would need to go down as being um, historically important, and of course, such lofty goals can only can only be achieved through uh, through time. So yeah. we don't know whether these things are, and Chris, and Chris thinks it is. And but it is a masterpiece of engineering, the engine in DLS, um, and the, the world doesn't really quite get understand that yet because we haven't met, perhaps opened up that um, that that Pandora's box of what's under DLS yet, which we intend to do this year. But um, to, to then now enter the realms of turbocharging this is a long way, a very long way of answering your question. Mike. You, can, you can see I'm, I'm falling into a habit here. Um, is, is we are going to do the same thing with, with turbocharging. And, um, and this, this ACS needed huge amounts of talk. Um, we wanted to pay uh, 
to celebrate and to tip our hat to the amazing Rothmans 959s and the SCR, SCRSs of the of the 80s, which was Porsche's golden era of rallying. And um and the the look of the car, I think you're right. This is this is definitely a departure for us. You could you could say that the uh the car that we build in in, in California, which we call the classic and DLS are very much um uh, interpretations of the F body early 911 and with ACS we 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 come to something which is I think is potentially a little bit more creative and a, a more of a um a more of a future looking a, a future uh, way of looking at a, a quintessentially old air cooled 911 with yeah. the benefit of celebrating the 959 and perhaps the G model a little bit in a uh, in a hybridized uh, uh, you know visual package um so yeah I'm, I'm, i i think it is a departure for for, for singer and um we're excited with it and um and i think the it's a great it's a great first window frame for for our first turbocharged engine yeah. Having um, having obviously driven that that first incarnation of your own turbo engine, I mean, how, what's the what's the short version? Yeah, what, what's it like? Um, well, I haven't driven it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Apologies. I thought you'd been out in it. Okay. No, 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 no. That's it's it's it's, uh, it, it, it's very very fresh off the uh, off the off the off the uh, off the board. But uh, I mean, Richard's been driving it now for two months. And uh, it's it's bonkers. It, 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 it's it's a it's a terrific engine, and it's under stressed. It's twin turbocharged, um, three point six liter engine. It's got a few interesting tricks up its sleeve, um, and um, it is uh, tuned for torque for the for the for the for the, for the rally car um, for the for ACS, but has a um, has a pretty mighty headroom for 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 development, and uh, hopefully we're going to be showing showing a little bit of that in the coming months of, uh, of how that uh, how that engine will be developed awesome and um, when sort of talking about the saf- the safari thing um you know, when i heard that there was going to be a singer safar- safari i was trying to imagine what i was going to see and i'd been thinking about all the other type of safari cars that have been around over the last couple of years and sort of uh, what's it going to be like is it just going to be another one but it's of seeing this what i've seen of it today it's just such a huge step change on from any of those it's it's next level it's ha- w- what drove that how did you come up with all of those ideas well it kind of has to be i mean i, I it just it just it, it, uh, thank you for that by the way the, the, very very humbling and and, and affirming it, it just we, we we started out with something which wasn't and we didn't like it and we thought that you know, there's a lifted Safari 911s are very much uh, of the moment, aren't they? There's yeah, a lot of them. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of it about. Um, and some of them are great. Them, it? um... Yes, it is, and it's and 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 some people very dear, near and dear to us have, 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 have are building cars which are wonderful, and a lot of them have been inspirational to us. But again, if we're going to do this, it has to be. It just had to be very, 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 very special, and um, we w- we had to have the the runway to do to do something which was um, bold, uh, I think, and and appropriate not just for our client. He wanted something very special, but also for the company. And I think um, we have to keep um, we have to keep our standards up, and we have to keep our ambition at the right level. And this is. Um, what you're looking at is with ACS is, is the result of that. We need to surround ourselves with the right creative yep. uh, talent, the, the geniuses that have been involved in this car from the styling perspective and from the, from the uh, engineering perspective. It's, it's, as I said, it takes a village. This isn't me. This isn't Maz. This is, uh, this is us pushing people to their limits sometimes, but to get what we all want. And, and this wonderful reaction to the car that we've, that we've experienced today just shows you that, you know, it's never an individual. It's always, it does take, it does require some vision, but it's all, if, if you've got enough talented guys um, working to the same goal, good things will happen. And that was very much the, the very, the very dangerous mantra that I, that, that I started singer in 12 years time, 12 years ago. I didn't know what, I didn't know what, where it was going to go, but I knew good things would happen because 
it was coming from a good place and good people were involved and how yeah. could it not and that was that that was really what the business plan was on a piece of paper how can this fail <laughs> you know? well it can fail a, lot, a number of ways of course but but um it it it's uh it is it is done from the heart it's done from the right spot it's done with some humility and some humbleness and it's done with the sense that um uh, uh we can develop things with w- w- transparently with others that that hopefully everybody loves um you know what a what a wonderful thing to be able to do as yeah. a human being yeah. so did the did the acs did that start was the was this the end goal or did it just well, get part, out of hand part of the the one of the reasons it's it's i I mean, we're not, I wouldn't call us particularly trendy in kind of our aspirations, but um, one of the things, uh, primary features of its sort of departure from what you normally see is is the desert racing aspect. Hmm. So versus, um, you know, uh, Richard's been building cars that race across Africa. In fact, uh, his father did before him, right? And they have, they have they're, they're very well honed for that. Um, but th- this um, this has a different function uh, or an additional function, which is desert desert racing. So that's long distance um, and high speed and a, and a different terrain, which kind of demands it looks much like a road racing car that has big wings and splitters and whatever else it does to to, to do that. This took on that that function. So it's a, it's a different, definitely, definitely the different types of rallies are um, kind of different animals. This, this actually has quite a broad range versus an actual, you know, specific desert racing a trophy yeah. trunk or something um, the, in terms of its ride height um, and, you know, a switch of, uh, there's a, you know, a tarmac setup, So it, it can, it can function there quite well. It's the right weight. It's not heavy, like a desert, um, a lot of desert racing mm vehicles are very heavy to make the suspension work you're hitting huge things and you need to keep the, the body stable um and this is this is a bit of a, a different approach you know being lighter and four-wheel drive is a very big deal so that really drove a lot of why the car is what it is in a sense that not in terms of how how beautiful it is that's all wrong but the you know in terms of what the requirements were um you starting at the tires right the tires and travel and 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 what it would do, what it's going to hit, very important. You hit a lot of things in the desert <laughs> that you don't know are there, don't know are coming up. Do you, uh, do you think we'll actually see the ACS on the start line somewhere? Is that the actual plan? Yeah, that's the that you know. I think that, that uh, definitely was the was the plan. Uh, we've been mired in um, in uh, you know get, getting it getting it this far. COVID kind of throws a monkey wrench into all of that given a lot, a lot of those races have been canceled or postponed or are questionable or whatever. So we're, yeah. we're, um, but yeah, that, that's the intent. That's, that's, the I mean, intent. surely there's, there's gotta be a, another, another tick in the box. If you can create a car that then actually managed to, to rank in a, in a race around the world somewhere of some substance. I mean, that would be quite an achievement, wouldn't it? Sure. No, I mean, no, I mean I, absolutely. Yeah. Hmm. yeah, absolutely. It's definitely on our, in our, um, on our horizon. It's a little hard Put, put our finger yeah. on exactly. and that's how it's that's how it's been um that was the that was when we went into a deeper rabbit hole than we than we started mm-hmm. off with in the in the first conversation it it it, it, it took on are we going to do this properly or are we just going to do a, a, something else that other people have, have maybe done um yeah. or can we actually bring something new to this and um more importantly can it really work um you know, doing a, doing a car which was more of a, a, a visual, um, uh, you know, uh, celebration of off roading cars. Yeah. Off roading nine elevens really wasn't very exciting to us. We wanted to do something that could really compete. And Matt Maz competes in in uh, in, in off road racing himself um, and knows a thing or two about the discipline. And we got very very excited about it because our clients wanted to do it as well. Um, and um, so it's been a, a very much a, a, an opportunity for us to to show perhaps that 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 we understand the discipline, surrounding again surrounding ourselves with people to help us do that, yeah. and uh, very much very much coming up with something that um, that can not only compete but can aspire to do very well uh, in competition. 
This special podcast is brought to you by the PorscheBuyer.com and Ashgood Classic and Sports Cars. I saw a video of it today. I think it probably probably is in Wales where it was jumping. And I, my, what was it? 15 foot up in the air. And it looked, excuse the French, but fucking impressive. It was just outrageous. Yeah, I was standing right next to it. I was standing right <laughs> next to it. So I, I was, uh, yeah, we, we, it was, the, the car is, each time Richard would come back from a recce, it was like, this fucking thing is mental. And it was just like, you know, it's, it's, it, I mean, there's so much new, new thinking went into the car from obviously the way it looks into the way the bodywork operates and a lot of new ideas that Richard put into the car, which he hasn't put into one of his rally cars before. Yeah. Um, and a lot of stuff to go wrong. And, um, and it didn't, and it, and it's out of the box. It feels very, very right. And it feels, it feels like it's on the money. And I think the car has a big future ahead of it in terms of where we develop it and uh, where we might compete in it. Mm. And, um, and hopefully people having fun in it. I mean, it's just, a, it's just a, it's just a, a grin inducing weapon of a, of a, of a, of a thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just I'd love to see an ACS series. I mean, imagine a, a full lineup of, of, you know, can you imagine that a, a, a sort of singer ACS series in the future? Yes, we can imagine that. It's a very good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky, I saw you went to, idea. to see uh, Richard's response. Uh, and I, and I talked to him, you know, every day, every other day. Uh, when I first, the day I met Richard, he t- he he took me out in a uh, uh, this RGT, so it's a nine nine seven Cup car rally car. Yeah. Um, and and I, I I had never experienced anything like it, jumping on a on a you know, fifty miles an hour on a public road. I mean, the thing is an absolute animal and to see how impressed he is with this thing and just completely blown away. He's just given the level of what he's experienced. Um, I mean, it makes me sick that I'm stuck in Santa Monica and I'm not over there driving. (laughs) He's just absolutely blown away by it, which is, um, that says a lot. It does. Generally you'll, you'll kind of bore, you'll bore him with, you know, a, a lifted 911. It's a little, it's a bit silly there. You know, he's seen a lot of things. So yeah. We're Maz, you and, um, you and I were talking off air about the brilliance of, of Richard Tuthill and, and his skills, particularly in uh, taking 911s on, on safari. He's had notable success in East Africa with four outright victories, for example. Um, how realistically could, could you have feasibly done this build without Richard Tuthill? Well, I mean, it's, that's like, could we have done, you know, DLS without without Williams Formula One? I mean, yeah, you could have, but it wouldn't, arguably not, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be the same result, right? I mean, that level of uh, deep understanding that we experienced at Williams in, in material science and forecasting, that you know, for an analog old 911, right, for that application was off the scale. In Richard's case, um, you know, arguably he, he'd be unmatched. And yeah, they, so- this, 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 it's not just the sheer experience, but, you know, his personality and his perseverance. I mean, he's easily one of the most reliable people I think we've ever dealt with. And, and we have a lot, you can imagine, we have a lot of suppliers and a lot of folks around the business and, and so on. And some people really stand out as um, someone who's going to get to the finish line. And I think that's a, that is a rally kind of, his brain is wired that you will get it done and you will get it done on time. And it'll be, yeah. Be proper, yeah. so. at, at what point then maz did you guys identify richard as as the person to work with and also how important is it as a consequence that the acs is going to be built in the uk at the tut hills facility well the the first that so we were we were approached by the client um and and and, and rob and i were chatting and the conversation kind of was well we're you know this is this is an, a narrow ask to build a rally car. We, we don't, that's, that's not our, we're not qualified to do that. But I said, you know, I've heard of a guy that is, I didn't know him at the time, but um, Chris Harris went to university with him. And so I called Chris and um, he put me into, I was headed to England for a, a DLS trip. Anyway, I was headed out to Williams. He's not that far away. Yeah. Um, and I decided just to pop in. I, 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 I rang him. I showed up. Um, at his is a fabulous facility. It's just it's absolute heaven on earth. His place, um, and not even within twenty minutes, we were in some kind of I don't remember what it was. It was a, it was an air cooled wide body something with lights all over it. 
uh, and a dog box, which I had never driven. And he's just has me driving on the wrong side of the road. I was jet lagged, hung over, of course. <laughs> I was been out with Chris the night before. And um, it was just, I was like, almost instantaneously, this is 100% the guy for this project. And then we got in that 997 RGT. And I was like, for sure, this is, there's, you couldn't possibly out qualify this guy for, for this thing. But we didn't, that was in the original kind of, I think what Rob said was, you know, we took a look at it and we, we didn't really like that we were going to do, you know, just a lifted kind of uh, off road 911. We, it needed to go much further than that, which is, which is so the pro, the project evolved over time um, um, in, into what it is today. In terms of the 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 expertise so um you know because it's a it's a it's a it's a competition car with uh with the role structure and and that there's an expertise in his building uh you know like i said two generations deep of building cars that that do that and then of course the ability to test and support them is is very very important right um supporting someone at, a, at an event um is what they do at yeah. at Tut hill yeah so it's their thing isn't it so will all the cars be built? They're being built at Tut Hill, all of them. Yeah, that's the plan. Um, have Have you had any orders today? <laughs> I don't know what is happening, but we have, <laughs> I, like I have. They, they don't They don't come through Robert Robert myself, but it, yeah. it's yeah, yeah, they do. Meant, they do. Of, <laughs> there's so much oh, emails works. and texts, and we need to collect our. I want to know how many cars can be on the grid for next year. I reckon that's got to be the plan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's um, re- yeah, reaction has been just bonkers, mm, to yeah. be honest, guys. So it, 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 uh, we did, we didn't, we didn't know. Um, I, I, we, we didn't really know what we had. Um, we know we loved it, and our client loved it, and um, but we'll see, we'll we'll see. I mean, it's 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 uh, it's um, it's exciting. It's just it's just like, I mean, if if I can do this until I die, you know. <laughs> You'd be mess happy. around with old 911s and 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 be given a huge amount of trust and a big sack of money to go and to go and create something that's that's yummy that's of Porsche and celebrates Porsche but also you know f- furthers the philosophy of singer what a what a way to live and so we're we're, 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 we're not we're, we're not we're not try we're not too we're not too focused on the destination we're trying to enjoy the journey mm. i wouldn't to sound too much like a hippie so we're, not, <laughs> um, we're not um which is the way which is certainly how singer started we i had no idea where it was going i just knew that it was quite a good i i was convinced it was a good idea and as i said some something good would happen from it so i Today, the last six hours suggest that something good will happen with ACS, but God knows what. I don't know how many we might <laughs> make or whatever. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Have you had a conversation about production and, and how many you might be able to make in a period of time, if, if necessary? No. No. We haven't. <laughs> we really we haven't. Really it's, it, it's really, let's, let's, see how, let's see how the, you know, the, car, yeah, the, car, the car world reacts to this and we'll, and, we'll, and we'll figure it out kind of thing. We have the luxury of focusing on... on just as making um, making something as 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 fine as possible, and and the the luxury is that we don't have to think about we yeah. need to do X, sell X number of units to do a thing. It's really about that car that's in the in the images, and and the, uh, we're doing another one as well. Um, it's, and, it's, and we'll, it's, it's that sort of mentality. If you build it, they will come. Mm. Yeah. Dan- yeah, dangerous, I mean, it, dan- dangerous yeah. mentality that but yes it, it, yeah it, 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 it is and, and it means and it just means that you're never building down to a price you are always building up to a up to a up to a philosophy and, and that and yeah. that is what the day the day we have to start scratching our eighth you know scratching our chin and going hmm, what else should what should we do now uh we've never had to do that there's three, there's three or four things up our sleeve which we're going to un- unleash in, in in the fullness of time which are just things that we absolutely have to have on our our driveway um and they're going to be as great as they need to be to satisfy us if they need to be built down if they need to be bean counted and built down to a price they will be they will be shit um, and, they, <laughs> and they, they won't they simply won't be good enough and it will be um, it will be if 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 me and Maz ever allow ourselves to do such a thing, it will be the death of the company. I think. Um, yeah. It just doesn't. Yeah. It just can't work that way. I, I um, think a, a great example of all that is uh, the, the 
the lights on the ACS because you, you the first look, I remember standing next to the car with Richard and it's like, oh, they look really familiar. Are they from the GT3R, the 991 generation? And then after yes. you think about it and you go, well, actually, it's ludicrous, but it makes perfect sense because if it's good enough for these factory cars running around the morns in the middle of the night, then, I mean, why not, isn't it? You know, and I just, it's that level of kind of ludicrous outside the box thinking, which I personally think separates you guys from a- a- anything else that might loosely be described as competition. Yeah. Well, and what, we did, what, what we did to get them, which we won't discuss. <laughs> well, I, 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 I feel I feel kind of feel like we should. I mean, the 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 lights were uh, f- uh, the lights were purchased very early on and very much set the the tone for the forward looking feel of the car. Um, um, and then we couldn't turn them on because they're <laughs> they're, por- they're Porsche Motorsport parts that require. <laughs> The kind of passcodes that the FBI have to, have to or the CIA have to, have to, to launch a nuclear nuclear weapon. So, so li- literally, we just couldn't turn them on. So we 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 had to go to our our great friend and um, uh, Andy, a guy called Andreas Poiniger, who is a god amongst cars, who's become <laughs> a very close friend of Maz and I. And we asked uh, Andy, who's the head of GT Cars at Porsche, whether he could maybe help us turn, turn the lights on <laughs> and with his help we got the buggers turned on and boy are these things these are retina burning bloody rocket ships of, of headlights they really are amazing and of course it then allowed us not to put auxiliary lights on the front of the car which some would say is is, is a is you know, you know a sacrilege to, <laughs> to have a, an off-road car without without Mass kept saying, where are, the, where, where are the bloody driving lights? Where's the, where the, driving, where, where's where, the where, where's, where's the pod? Where's the pod? <laughs> well, you know, but the, the car will clearly benefit from additional lighting at some stage for, cert, for certain events. But these things are, are, uh, are death-defyingly strong. And we, we, we drove deep into the evening yesterday in Wales and uh, with absolutely no ambient light whatsoever. And Richard was getting faster and faster on the track with, the, with these headlights. So... I, I really must thank Andy for his uh, for his help and um, these amazing lights that Porsche have developed for their racing cars. Um, yeah, in- incredible. So yeah, thanks for noticing. Um, they were a no a bit of a no brainer for us. They 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 fitted the 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 aesthetic of the car and uh, were clearly allowed us to have incredible lighting without um, a huge amount of uh, auxiliary lighting to to mess to mess up the look of the car. That's the thing is that, you know, a foot along from those like ultra modern headlights and the technology they give to the car, you've got the classic uh, long bonnet uh, generation badge or emblem on on, on the front. And again, I, I love that kind of melding of traditional kind of heritage, if you like, that we, we all know Porsche and, and Singer to be associated with uh, right next to this brilliant technology. I, I just think that's like such a fantastic touch that surmises that whole kind of car for me. You know, it's it feels very modern very new but also very familiar mm. you know well in there in there yeah. somewhere is a yeah. is a 964 body isn't there i mean I've, um yeah fellow 964 owner um yeah how, how much of the 964 is still in there other than the badge a lot i mean it's it, the, you know the, sh- the chassis is the 964 the case of the engine is the 964 um uh the suspension has been changed quite radically as you can imagine to get the to get to get the articulation and the uh the, the wheel travel but uh no it's uh, it's it's like all our like all everything we do at the moment it's all it's all uh, there's there's very uh, you know it's a porsche 964 and porsche 911 underneath it and um and it's a testament to the enormous brilliance of that particular iteration of the 911, which, of course, Porsche claimed, I think, was 88, 80% new, I think, in 1989 when the 964 came along after the G models. Um, obviously looking very similar to the, to, to the previous cars, but, but a, a real step change in its, to, in its rigidity. In, in the monocoque's rigidity and um, some of the, of, of course, the advanced systems for the late eighties on the car ABS and, uh, and, uh, a, a beautiful power steering system, of course, none of which have been retained on, on the ACS, which has its own, um, its own braking and, and steering systems. But, um, but no, the, 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 the it's, it's very much a, the, the 911, um, uh, under there and, um, and, a, and a, as usual, a perfect point for us to, to do our stuff. Um, the 964. 
Awesome. I think uh, we'll wrap up. We've got a, a one question. Have we, Joe, from a, a reader that's kind of quite desperate for us to ask you guys? So we'll, we'll yeah, well, we've actually got a couple of couple of questions if we've got time. But we'll see how we go. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I mean, a fairly straightforward question, more more aimed at your classic range, I'd imagine. But the, in terms of um, maintenance and support, I mean, the question was was how difficult or easy is it to to maintain and support such bespoke yeah cars. I mean, where, where do you come from on that sort of thing? Do they do they come back to you directly, or, or do people normally handle it themselves? No, no. I mean, uh, the, the, you know, the car the, as 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 we've just been talking about, it's quite apropos. Um, the car is a nine eleven. It's uh, it's mm. uh, it's 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 very familiar to any good Porsche mechanic. Um, our, our, when we when we uh, when we take a commission, one of the first questions is to to, to our to our, to our clients is whether they're familiar with um, air cooled nine elevens and whether they have their own service provider. So some guys have, have have had these cars for a while and had them looked after by special mechanics, and we're very happy to uh, to educate those guys in in, in the uniqueness of of, of of our work, which uh, which which is easy because it's all very familiar um and um or, or we can introduce them to specialists uh, that that we know for, for example in england all our cars are maintained by richard at his facility in banbury um and um so we have a, a great you know a great a great partner there and similarly we have other partners around the world where where, where we have outcrops of of our of our cars so any any good porsche mechanic can can look after one of our cars quite easily yeah it makes it easier to easier to manage around the world then definitely yeah um so yeah go on to the next one was um in terms of onboard yeah this goes across the whole range i suppose in terms of onboard computer management yeah do, do you guys get involved in a lot of electronics i mean is there um is there bespoke kit or do you just buy things in as you need it what, what, what sort of goes on, on on that sort of front there's some there's some um you know engine management and and things obviously but None of it is. It's not like a modern. Uh, uh, you know, modern cars are like a wiring wood with mm. wheels. You know, many, many, many ECUs. It's the the cars are still very uh, fairly analog in in that in that sense. Nothing that um, you know someone with a laptop and a and an internet connection can connect back to us, and we can we can help um, with engine management issues or, 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 or any of that. It's fairly simple stuff. I think with I think with DLS, um, most most can talk a bit more about this. The the relationship we had with Bosch on DLS was was very special, and um, Marla, who did the um, the engine management on on the DLS, is a, it, it's quite a uh, that was quite involved for us. Um, yeah. um, a traction control ABS, a bespoke traction control, bespoke ABS system, and, and an ESP system on DLS. Um, so, so that was a very again. As I was talking a little bit earlier about um, about partners, Bosch were a fantastic partner on DLS and still are. Um, and watching a well honed uh, German company like Bosch get their shit together um, is quite the thing. And, yeah. uh, and oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. right, Mercy? yeah, yeah, that, definitely. DLS has a, di- a, a higher level of, of mm-hmm. electrics, but nothing that we can't support. Um, it's higher level, certainly f- for us, but uh, you know relative to a to a new car it's still mm. fairly uh, understandable the thing about you know racing cars is that they, they they tend to be fairly simple tools yeah. at, the, at the end of the day you don't want them all that complicated um certainly in, in rally cars and when you go see richard's other work i mean they're they're very serviceable very accessible um they can't be impossible to deal with so i mean in our case when it comes to things like body and paint and trim yeah we have a weird we have a standard that isn't just for everybody in the world to, to do. And so we, we help with that stuff should, should someone need it. But mechanically, it's not that difficult. DLS is a different, obviously a bit of a different animal, a mm-hmm. um, bit, bit more of a gem that, you know, has, has a higher level of, of uh, tolerance and, and things that we address. Going back to your great partners and in, in terms of systems and from an engine point of view, I mean, is um, with the new turbochargers, yeah, making headway, is that, is that going to go back to Williams, do you think? Or is that, uh, are you doing that in-house separately? Um, uh, in, in terms of this, this, this current, the, the ACS, the, oh, there's, yeah. 
and oh, well, ACS and and DLS going forward, I suppose. If you, you said there's yeah, turbochargers are gonna are gonna start appearing on on cars going forwards. Is yeah. is that gonna is that gonna head back to England or is that going mm-hmm. elsewhere? That that is that is something that that uh, that we'll discuss later. <laughs> but, yeah, keep all that keep all that uh, close to our chest for some time. <laughs> Could I could I ask a simpler question, <laughs> or one that's probably not so you don't not so guarded? Um, going back to your the classic builds, you know, you've built 150 cars. Um, I think you were saying, um, and that there were some special cars, you know, sort of special wish cars. What's been probably your? Has there been three favourites that you could pick out? Would would you would you, you allow to yourself children, to Andy. pick how three? Can you, how can you how can you pick yeah, yeah who's your favorite child is that allowed i oh, know that is a very difficult question i'm not sure if it's one that you actually want to answer but could you well i i mean i think in terms of special wish this is by orders of magnitude the biggest departure from anything that we've turned into um you know a, a whole a new product a third, yeah kind of a yeah. third uh, product is the wrong word for us the others are 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 not I mean, they're, they're special wishes and that someone wants a, I don't know, a logo embossed on things or, or, yeah. uh, but, you know, um, finishes and, and uh, generally aesthetic changes, but generally not mechanical changes. We don't really um, do that very yeah. much. We, we have a, we have a formula, we have a recipe that works. But which, well. which is your sort of favorite build out of say the classic series? Oh, that's impossible, Rob. You got one? Why are you asking me? I've asked the the impossible question, haven't I? There's one DLS car that, 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 Rob, I think you you might know in terms of color uh, that I think is is going to be controversial, but it's just mind-blowing, absolutely mind-blowing, and I I can't wait to see it. It's been painted already. It's in it's in production, um, and it's a it. I don't think um, there's going to be another one of them. If I had to guess, Rob, you know what I'm talking about, right? Oh, that does sound interesting. Yeah. I, I, I've, I've, you've got me thinking Ruby Stone there. I don't know. No, well, yeah, I, yeah. Well, it's, it, 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 if you're talking about the car I'm thinking about, Maz, it's the pink car, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, p- pink does it a disservice, but uh, it's certainly in the in the ruby in the ruby stone. Um, uh, color palette uh, uh, it's a it's a it's a very good question I, I, I i've loved and fallen in love with so many of our commissions um that it would be it would be probably a bit dangerous for me to pick mm. to pick winners but there there are two car two cars for me which were pivotal um that, that were very personal to me and um the, the car number three which was uh we called the new york car which was painted a beautiful uh color called new york stone gray um and it had a had a um like a a cognac um in colored interior which was watching that car go together was was one of the one of the best things i've ever been involved with and then seeing seeing the client's reaction to it when we presented it to him in soho in new york um was 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 pretty special and that and that car and that color i've Again, p- putting our modesty to one side, uh, I think it, it, it very much put Singer on the map. Yeah. Um, in terms of our colours and our trim and our aesthetic, dare I say it, yeah. actually starting to um, be seen as being influential with other car manufacturers. I, again, um, it was, perhaps it's a bit pompous for me to say that, but I, um, I, I had a meet. We had a lot of heads of design departments from very big companies coming up to me and asking me who does our color and trim. And I'm saying, well, I, I do it. <laughs> <laughs> and, they, and, they, and, and, and these guys are going, well, you know, you've, you know, you've, 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 you're really moving the needle in our design department. Um, and so that was wonderful. That was a, that was a extreme, that was a, a color that I, I saw on a, on another 911 um, that I've always wanted to do. And I, persuaded the client to paint his car that he wanted a red car and i said please can we do this this stone gray <laughs> color which is a, it's a 1950 actually a 
a variant on a 1955 Mercedes-Benz color. So anyway, that's a, that, there's that, that car was very important to me. And another car, which certainly is, is in the realms of the, of the super special wishes car was a car we called Mulholland, which was a car we oh, did yeah. for another fantastic, um, a fantastic client of ours who's, um, who, who wanted, who wanted to do something very, very focused to celebrate, uh, the Mulholland, um, the Mulholland road in, in, yeah. up in los angeles that That's i know static. very well and um and very stripped out car with with uh with Menelite inspired wheels that were we that uh, yeah, that was that was a pretty pretty amazing pretty amazing car and yeah. um Beautiful. and uh and that's certainly one of my favorites yeah mm. yeah i think you chose well there rob well done yeah, there are <laughs> stellar examples there. We've got uh, 10 questions that we always, they're, they're quick fire questions that we ask every guest that comes on Road to Red Line. We're going to put them to to Rob and Maz. You'll have to answer them separately. Maybe if we do Maz first and then Rob. Um, the, the only rule is, well, there, there, there are no rules, but if you, ha- if you have to think about the answer, then it's the wrong answer. And it just gives us a pretty good gauge as to, as to where, where our guests are at on the, on the Porsche scale, I suppose. And um, yeah, I, I'm hoping at this point, Andy or Joe's actually got the questions to hand. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, I'll just... Uh, oh, Joe's got them, good. Uh, well, uh, let me get them fired up. Give me two seconds. I've got them saved here. I was going to say, just while I'm finding these, uh, these questions, I have one quick question for both of you. Um, what, what does it for you that doesn't have a Porsche badge on it? I'm always curious to know, because we're all complete Porsche nuts and everything has a Porsche badge, but most people have got some other weird and wonderful interests that isn't Porsche related. Have either of you got a, another, uh, another you know, brand that, that does it for you? I don't know Maz's answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the F40 LM. It's like my first love or something. Yeah, I'm obsessed with that car. Ooh. Have you got one touch? I mean, obviously, the all the lightweight, the you know, light, lightweight manual sports cars that that yeah. all of us probably probably love. I think the, those are, um, you know, shared amongst guys like yourselves and and yeah. Robin and myself. But um, I struggle with a lot of mo- modern cars. I just don't. I just look too much grip, too much power, yeah. too easy, boring. They all kind of start to look the same. Yeah. I think yeah, I think that's that, but that, a lot of yeah, people are going that way, aren't they? It's not just mm. I don't know. It seems to be more and more prevalent that everybody's thinking that. Yeah, that. it was a car that was the right. It was the right. You know, it had 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 a lot of power, but it didn't have you know like completely unusable power. It was a handful. It's a handful to drive. You know, manual um, aero aero adjustments and things. I just I just find it. Um, Kind of, kind of one of the 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 only cars that that fits the bill. How about you, Rob? Is there anything me. else that does it for you? Oh God, endless cars that do it for me. I mean, I'm, I'm, <laughs> a, car, I'm a I'm a car perv of the of the of the highest order. But um, interestingly, the, 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 the car just popped into my brain. It certainly wouldn't necessarily be at the top of the list, but it just popped into my brain. It was the 1974 Alpine A310, which is a, which is a which is a car that I absolutely adore. Um, my 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 parents took me to France as, uh, religiously for six weeks every summer holiday, and um, that's where I fell in love with the 911 in 1970. But I also fell in love with Alpines, um, mm-hmm. um, the A110 uh, 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 to a lesser degree, but the A310, which I think is an absolute genius, especially the first uh, first iteration, um, and of course rear-engined. Um, eventually six cylinders. So obviously France is the closest thing France did to a 911. So <laughs> yeah. it's obviously yeah. something, something going on there. <laughs> <laughs> I've, um, I've, I've found these questions. I think what, oh, what so would be more <laughs> interesting to do it is I'll ask the question, Maz, if you give me your answer and then Rob, your answer. So that, that way, because if not, Rob's going to have an unfair two minutes to think about his answers a bit more. We don't want that. So we'll, uh, well, I'll ask the question and then we'll go Maz and then Rob, and then I'll go on to You're the cool. next 10 quick fire Porsche questions. Okay. Um, so question one, air or water? Maz. Air, obviously. Mm. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> obviously. Air. 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 Question two, uh, most admired Porsche model. Oh, the, the, uh, 993, the, the, uh, 993 RS. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, Rob. Oh, that's a bit cruel. Um, 
1967 911s nice uh, question three favorite porsche color bahama yellow nice maz uh, uh, uh golden green oh i love golden green <laughs> uh, question four ultimate porsche icon this is a person uh, 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 uh andy preninger no, yeah. I'm kidding. I, I, Nor- no, Norbert. You're not, you're not kidding. You're not kidding. I know, I know. But he, you know, he's still he's still alive. He's still alive. <laughs> he yeah, can turn I, the lights on as well, can he? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, yeah. I had a profound conversation with Norbert Singer last year. No, 2019. That. Um, pretty much changed my life so uh, 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 Norbert Singer has to has to has to be it for me but we are in the presence of uh, we are very close to genius in uh, in, uh, in in having Andy Prodigus on the face of this earth um, and uh, I think he's going to go down as a as a towering figure in the years to come excellent yeah fully agreed uh, number five is favorite track favorite track yeah. oh track yeah. Not not musically, Rob. Unfortunately. <laughs> so, yeah. so, um, God, that's, um, that's different. Uh, so so I just for uh, uh, sentimental reasons, I'm near and dear to Castle Coon, thanks to DLS. Nice Castle Coon. That's actually our local track. That's it's hilarious. Otherwise <laughs> known as Certain Death, I think is our nickname for it. But, um, yeah. uh, we spend little- a lot of time at, at Laguna. Yeah. Awesome. Mine would be the streets of Willow, which is uh, Willow Springs, which is a, a, a fantastic circuit in the middle of the desert. There's an incredible scary track, which I think is called the big track. And then there's the uh, the baby track uh, called the streets of Willow, which is um, I've been, which is where I used to go almost on a monthly basis with, with the Brown Bomber that we talked about before and um, awesome. getting, my, getting myself into, into, into a pickle on a car on, on a track that wasn't that fast. <laughs> brilliant uh, question six uh to fuchs or not to fuchs do you dig those wheels i think oh, god <laughs> he's the answer the, well, yeah. the, the most the most iconic uh and important uh aluminium car wheel ever 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 designed so yes <laughs> icon 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 so i uh, ab- absolutely it's uh it, it's synonymous with porsche Yes, exactly that. We had a feeling you guys would say that. Um, then the next questions, I think we we know the answer as well. Stock or hot rod? It's not going to be stock, is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> not I, a I tell you what, Rob, Rob has a GT3 touring that should remain untouched. It's Ooh. a fabulous thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I tend to agree. I mean, when I said the 1967 911S. Listen, we 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 all love to mess around with Porsche 911s, obviously, include especially us. But they are bloody brilliant out of the box, and um, not touching them is is isn't isn't the worst thing in the world to do. Yeah. Um, um, they are very special cars, and um, there's a lot to be said for a bog standard 911 uh, S that you can buy now, um, and um, and uh, so I don't know, really know how I'm answering your question, but we like them both. <laughs> <I guess. laughs> That's good. That, that, that touring, I, I, I definitely would leave that be. Maybe of a Sharkworks exhaust, perhaps, but that's, that's a phenomenal car out of the box. Um, question eight is a bit more interesting for you guys. Uh, so wide or narrow body? I know a lot of your cars obviously have that kind of more uh, wider muscular appearance, but I mean, it's, you can't be a good old narrow body, surely. No, I mean, I, I, lo- I love the, I love the, the you know, the, the, the narrow body. And it obviously takes us back to the 356, which is, which is, um, which is very much um, unswollen. If that's, if that's a, the right term for obviously a car, which is very slab sided. Um, and obviously begat the 911, which was also slab sided at the time. Um, yeah. I, I, I guess, I guess, if I mean, the classic that uh, with the the the, the model that we're building in California, we call the classic, clearly inspired by the 911 ST, which was the first uh, properly flared uh, 911 race car. So I would I would say I have to go wide wide for me if, if I had to have a gun to my head. Yeah, yeah unless, unless it's a 964, then yes, nice. 
Unless it's a 3.8. Yeah, yeah <laughs> anyway. absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, three point eight RS. Uh, penultimate question. Uh, so, what, what's your idea of better time spent? Uh, a cars and coffee or a track day? Oh, track day, easy. <laughs> Thought you might say that for me. Yeah, I, I, I guess. I mean, there, there's there, there's pleasure to be had in walking around with a cup of coffee, kicking other people's tires. Come on, there, there is, isn't there? <laughs> and and, uh, and and pretending that you're a good driver not rather than having it uh, black and white that you're not, which Sad is us- you. usually, what, usually <laughs> what happens at track days for me anyway. But, uh, yeah. But yeah. But, uh, walk, and, yeah. Walk around the cars and coffee with Rob and you have to stop every 40 seconds while he's photographed some detail on something for 10 minutes. <laughs> You don't get very yeah. far very quickly. <laughs> I, I would, I would, I would say I get, I get more pleasure, especially I mean, if it's a well curated cars and coffee. Um, it, uh, you know, seeing seeing a bunch of interesting cars in um, parked, um, hopefully in California when the sun's out on a Sunday morning is it's it's, it's pr- pretty pr- pretty pleasurable. Yeah, um, yeah. And uh, and you know, taking some inspiration and and uh, and just enjoying them as 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 uh, you know as works of art. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, exactly. I, I didn't, didn't expect that to be fair. Um, last question that always starts good debate on this podcast is: uh, Is the Cayman a proper Porsche? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, goodness. oh goodness. Yeah. It's. I mean. Pr- yes. I mean. It, it, to me, it answers the question of the driving experience. I think Porsche might have left behind a bit in the nine eleven. For sure. So the the ultimate answer in favour of the Cayman, that I think, to be honest, uh, take that to win. I mean, from from the driver's seat anyway. I, Rob, Rob Rob's Rob's opinion on it's on the outside is more qualified than mine. But you know, for me, what what that car does through what especially you know a, a new GT4 through the through the steering wheel and through the pedals, and, you know, at low speed, you don't have to be going mental to to and to enjoy that car to me that's what the 911 always was and they you know like i said cars have now so much grip and so much power that you know on a public road you have to be going really breakneck speeds to get it to move around a bit but you you, you can do that in a in a cayman gt or whatever yeah yeah, yeah. yeah i mean I, I i i agree i mean uh, i've porsche's mid-engine cars are, are amazing are they are, are they are they going to be Excuse me. Are they going to be icons? I'm not sure about that. Um, but are they real Porsches? Absolutely, lutely, yeah, for sure. Especially the GT4, GT4 or, or the or a Porsche um, Boxster Spider. Yeah. I mean, incredible, incredible cars, and um, you know, and, and, and quantifiably different to a 911, yeah. uh, but still Porsche. Um, uh, yeah, so mm. I'd say yes. Yeah. Well, uh, fantastic answers, guys. Um, Rob and Maz from Singer Vehicle Design. We really appreciate you coming on Road to Redline, especially Same. on the day that the ACS dropped. And it's a it's a real line in the sand moment for, for Singer Vehicle Design in stepping into the realms of competition. So uh, we want to wish you all the best with it. Obviously, you, you don't need any luck. You, you make your own luck. And, and that car really is an outrageous creation. So huge congratulations on that. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, sure. The line in the sand, Rob. That's clever. You can have that. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) That's going to be the strap line on the new website tomorrow. (laughs) Until they get it back up and working again. That's the the next thing. (laughs) Uh, Rob and Maz, like I say, thanks very much for your time tonight. And uh, yeah, all the best. Thank you, guys. guys. Real pleasure. Um, Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you. Yeah, nice to chat. See you guys. Ideal. Cool. This podcast was brought to you by theporschebuyer.com for that quick and easy sale and Ashgood's classic and sports cars for unrivaled choice and value on your next Porsche.